Shazam addresses the allegation. We've been waiting for this video for a very long time. Let's get into it. Hey guys, you might have recently seen a video with some unfound accusations of my alleged involvement in the Abba Power Matching scandal of 2014. These mm. are being done in extremely bad faith by the same group of drama YouTubers. And I've never had a chance to make a statement because it's about something that happened 10 years ago. But now that these videos have fueled hate and rage towards my reputation and my career as well as also implicating me in a literal crime i feel like i have to share my experiences with the community so like i watched one of these but so basically the the moral of the story is they said basically it was a, something about a match fixing scandal basically he got caught or allegedly he got caught and and he said that he left csgo to go to valorant to get a clean sweep and that's basically the general like that's basically the story like summed up but like, let's hear Shazam's point of view. Let's see if he can counter the points. Maybe he cannot, maybe he can, but let's watch this. I made sure to script this video out because I want to be as clear and concise as possible and explain how wrong it is what they're doing. I want to start by saying in no uncertain terms, I have never been involved with match fixing and I have never thrown a match. These are serious accusations being made with no evidence. These YouTubers are irresponsibly twisting the Abapire situation mm. to push their narrative. So we'll get down to the details of the scandal, as well as what I knew and experienced. To have a full picture of what occurred, it's important to understand the environment at the time. In the early days of CSGO and skin trading, there was a website called CSGO Lounge that let users trade and wager skins on matches in various leagues and tournaments. This website, oh. which became the main platform for skins, was almost completely unregulated. Because CS skins had and still have translatable monetary value, they became a de facto currency for the game. The scene was young and people didn't really realize how real esports was yet. Because it was so easy to do with skins, betting on matches was really normalized, and it felt like a majority of the fans participated without fully understanding the implications of betting on games. So this, back then, like the Dragon Warrior was like, what, less than a thousand, two thousand bucks? It was actually pretty cheap. Um, and, and like CSGO was like the thing. Everyone was doing the gambling skin websites. Everyone was like trading skins. Like there was no regulations. A whole bunch of like people had websites and they would like promote them gambling with skins. Like it was a whole bunch of stuff, including the betting on games. But um, the betting on games was actually like a very, very, very tiny portion of this huge thing that got banned or regulated over time. You see what I'm saying? That's all I kind of want to say. Looking back now, especially given the amateur state of the scene at the time, it is crazy to think about how rampant skin gambling was on CSGO Lounge. On August 21st, 2014, Iba Power, who was set to play Neko Guides in a match for the SIVO League, decided to use this match as an opportunity to bet against themselves and throw in order to win skins on CSGO Lounge. The what? relationship between the two teams was that days the IGL of Iba Power co-owned netcode guides with his good friend casey foster i knew casey foster because i helped him develop his website as a web developer and i was also sponsored by the website at the time i didn't even know that he was a web developer so he's like shit his name is like actually talented um but that's crazy that he knew the people for i buy power so that's why i think people thought he was implicated in the scheme because he actually was like he knew those people maybe he was friends with them maybe he wasn't maybe it was just a business relationship but it kind of looks like he was but let's keep moving on let's see what's his like story about 10 minutes before the match went live casey told me abba power were throwing the game throws seemed to be an open secret amongst pros and they were warning friends who could lose skins on bets i had already bet on the game for abba power to win and on csgo lounge you couldn't cancel a bet you could only change the team you picked the bet on when i was informed of the potential throw I made the regrettable decision to change my bet. I was young, had a lot to learn, and I admit I didn't want to lose my skins. I now recognize this was inappropriate and it goes against the spirit of fair competition. I was honest and forthcoming about how everything went down when I spoke to Valve's lawyers. And after Valve worked directly with CSGO Lounge and Richard Lewis, the investigative journalist who broke the original story, they found no evidence of my involvement in the fix. My story matched up, and I never received a punishment of any sort. I was never involved with the fic, I've never thrown games, and this is how it happened. Here's a clip of a video from Richard Lewis released the day the Abba Power players were banned. I had Shazam basically saying, I will go on the record and tell you everything, uh, you know, in exchange for not being uh, incriminated, which of course there was nothing to incriminate him into because he wasn't involved. Now I want to address why my name is entangled in this situation in the first mm. place. The first article regarding the Abba Power scandal was published by Richard Lewis the day after the match. So the, before we move into this, like this was huge. Like when this hit the news, this was all over YouTube. Everyone was talking about it. 
this kind of started the spiral of skin gambling because I don't know if this was before or after, but like after this point, um, a lot of like pro starting caught after this point, a lot of the gambling and stuff started going downhill. It, it was pretty bad. August 22nd, 2014. Within the article were leaked screenshots of me telling a friend that went to my school that the match was fixed. Honestly, I was really immature here. Bragging about it was dumb and the right thing to do would have been to come forward about it myself in the first place. That said, this conversation alone was not enough evidence, so the throw went unpunished for about five months. It was not until Richard Lewis got a series of text convos from the ex-girlfriend of Deborn, who was one of the people implicated in the throw, where Deborn explained how they conspired to throw the game. This was now enough evidence for Richard to do a full investigation and for Valve to step in and personally look into it. So this is the thing is, why... Dude, you guys are professional players, right? Why screw your careers? Why do something for something so stupid? You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand it. Like, just because you want to make money on skins, yeah, they're going to be worth stuff in the future. But like, you're like, if you get caught, you know how bad that is? You know how bad that will hurt your representation? I don't know. I don't know. When both Richard Lewis and Valve reached out to me, I told them everything I knew in the same way I've now done again. The decision to change my bet was something many people might have done in the moment, but looking back 10 years later, I wish I didn't. Once again, let me be clear. I was fully cooperative of Valve's investigation. I gave them an honest account of my knowledge and actions. I was transparent and I didn't face a punishment of any kind. Here are the results of their own investigation and the following blog post made by Valve themselves regarding the matter. And finally, the Hiko clip. This is the clip used by the Rage Baiters the most to try to implicate me in the Abba Power situation. It's, it's weird to me that Shazam would say one thing at, at, you know, six months ago, and then all of a sudden he joins Cloud9, and now he, he, he gained the conscience. Like, it doesn't make much sense to me. And so the, the Hiko clip is trying to explain that, like, how he he changed one direction and he's saying that he went another direction allegedly you see what i'm saying this is all alleged and no one no one can basically change you see what i'm saying he's like no one can change that fast it takes some time for someone to develop and i completely understand where he goes coming from but let's see um shazam's point of view let's see like what he's gonna go into because like i can kind of see now shazam's point where he said he was fully transparent. He told the truth. He owned up to his actions. He basically was very cooperative. And that's actually good. That's actually a good human being. He's like, hey, I, this is what I did. Here are my here are my accounts. Here's this. And he like actually was cooperative with Valve. He wasn't hiding anything. He didn't he he basically owned up to it. You see what I'm saying? And that's and that's like that's showing that's of change and this that's being an adult. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. But let's keep watching. And the fact that he actually messaged me and Jordan, like he was just me, you can say whatever. But the fact that he messaged Jordan as well, like I don't think Jordan would lie to you. I'm pretty sure Jordan would tell you the truth that he messaged him too. To give context, I joined Cloud9 after Hiko had stepped down from Cloud9 to join the Abba Power Corps. As a team, mm -hmm. Hiko and the Abba Power guys had signed with the Evil Geniuses organization. This team was never officially announced because they got banned before their debut at MLG X Games Aspen 2015. They were listed under Wicked Masterminds. With their throne game back in August being more in the open, it was honestly a gamble by him. It really sucked for him. He was an innocent party, and his new team got banned and dropped from their new contracts before they even started, and he was left teamless. The clip in question was taken right after his team was announced, banned, and dropped. I don't hold any ill feelings towards Hiko so many years later, but I wish he didn't say that. I'm not 100% sure why he did, and I understand he was in a difficult position, but his statement about me asking to throw a game is entirely false. Jordan, the teammate that Hiko specifically mentioned in the clip, publicly clarified with this tweet on the same day that the Hiko clip was posted to YouTube. Let's, watch, let's read it. Shazam never seriously asked about throwing matches. He was have joked about it. Most ever pros have included Hiko when the odds are huge. So this is the thing. And this is what we need to understand. Even joking about it, someone can actually think it's a true statement or you do stuff that's very shady. So like I can understand why Hiko believed this, but I can also understand that Shazam, like he said, he said that he was never... He never basically, he, he didn't like, he just joked about it. It wasn't true. And basically how I like, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about it too. Is like Hiko left. He left cloud nine. 
Shazam kind of, I don't know if he takes his spot, but he joins Cloud9. I kind of feel like that's a little shade too off Shazam because he, he took a spot. Maybe I'm like reading the details wrong. Maybe this this is just my what I'm seeing right now, and maybe it's just throwing shade on him. Maybe he's trying to blow in his representation, or he or he's mad at Shazam, IDK. But I can kind of see now Shazam's point of view. Hiko's not a bad guy. They're like I've seen older Hiko, very humble guy. You see what I'm saying? These they're they're very young here. They're very they're super young. Like they're they're gamers. Like I understand why it's just like the the competitive scene can very be very toxic and very like closed up you see what i'm saying so i understand why days made certain decisions but i don't know let's keep watching also here's a clip of richard lewis's perspective it was no secret in the na scene that these players have been involved in match fixing you know it was out there and pe people knew about it people had talked about it uh, i think hiko had a particular issue with shazam who was one of the players that came into cloud nine after hiko mm. went and he he had, had been very public about how he didn't particularly like him and felt he was potentially involved and embroiled in all of that. Okay, so see, this is see, you see what I'm saying? It's it's adding support to my theory, but like he's saying that he did not like him. That's a big point. Now, what you can read into that what you want because Shazam was actually one of the guys who, you know, for for all the things he's done good or ill previous. He was one of the guys that came out and did try to bring attention to the match fixing issue. Uh, and you could say maybe Hiko was trying to discredit him to kind of uh, draw attention away from this constant uh, speculation about what was going to happen to these players. Were they ever going to get caught? That's one way of looking at it. I don't necessarily subscribe to that myself. I think another way of looking at it is he just didn't like Shazam. I've never sacrificed mm. competitive integrity. I always try to win, whether it's a match or a simple rank game. This situation happened 10 years ago before I joined my first ever pro team. I've worked hard to be a competitor in this space for a long time, and I've been fortunate to be rewarded for that hard work and integrity. I've been given okay. opportunity after opportunity. I was able to win a world championship, and none of my respected peers, competitors, past teammates, have ever viewed or accused me as a cheater or a thrower. Not so I see Shazam's point of view. You see what I'm saying? He might have joked about it, but he actually said, hey, I never tried to throw a match. This was all before. You see what I'm saying? I owned up to everything with Steam. Everyone is twisting my words. They're they're taking a a truth from Hiko that might not be true. It might be it, it he didn't like me taking his spot. It, it kind of hurt Hiko's feelings, and I have not no to judgment towards Hiko. I don't hate the guy. I'm just, this is what I'm seeing in this video. I'm just going off what I see, and I can see Shazam's point of view, and I can see the misguided information that's being put on YouTube. Even I was misguided because I watched the video, and I was like, dang, Shazam really did that? Like, I was like, dang, that's crazy. Like, you see what I'm saying? But now I, I'm, I'm seeing the other point of view of his story. Let's keep moving on. Nothing I've said here is new information. It's all the same as my statement in Richard Lewis's article from January 16th, 2015. This scandal has re-entered the limelight because of a video titled Valorant's Most Hated Pro by a channel called Timmy Val, which is now renamed to Retake. While covering the Abba Power scandal is fun, Timmy maliciously spun the facts to fit a narrative that's focused on defaming my reputation. Mm. For those reasons, I'm going to respond to every accusation and implication he made in that video. Starting with the thumbnail alone, it's a picture of me with the text caught cheating. I'm not going to sit here and say I was one of the best FPS players ever, but to compete professionally for a decade took a lot of effort and hard work. I've been to almost 50 LAN events around the world. The even clickbait cheating is crazy. So I agree. I have to agree with Sajam and like, I'm glad that he didn't go the copyright or he didn't do the defamation lawsuit so far of what we've seen. I feel like him addressing the video head to head to the person who made the previous video is basically how to explain this is 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 amazing you see what i'm saying it's good and i feel like it's a better than suing wasting dumb money for no no reason he's addressing everything from his point of view and his story to to basically tell the truth about the youtube video um and this is cool, you see what I'm saying? And, and I understand that. And nothing to the other YouTuber, you see what I'm saying? Um, I just think the other YouTuber may maybe not had all the facts completely. And I feel like the other YouTuber was maybe misguided from the information he saw. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm just, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. I have no idea.
It's even crazier that nowhere in the video does he even talk about cheating outside of the thumbnail and the video description. The video proceeds to go into the IBA power fixing scandal that I just covered, but he paints it in a light where I was complicit and participated in the fixing. He was trying to rig the matches. Shazam was exposed shortly after being dropped from Cloud9 because it was revealed that he was involved in a match fixing scandal mm. in the pro league. For those of you that don't understand, basically match fixing is when a player would tell somebody the outcome of a game before it happens. And because Shazam was playing in the games, he had a huge control over what was going on. He says, I was throwing the games that I was playing in which is a That's serious crazy. accusation to make and entirely not true. He also paints it in a light where this situation is why I struggled to join teams. Shazam's sketchy pass along with this match is most likely the reason for his all over the place team hopping. The Abba Power mm. match happened six months before I joined my first pro team and I continued to compete on esports teams for the next 10 years. He shows an example of my Liquipedia team history in CSGO to show team hopping, but fails to realize that five of those teams listed were the same team. But that's crazy so misguided information is insane like what that's like okay so sorry i had a quick on something but they're like that's insane bro he twisted bro like so five of the teams were the same bro so we he didn't say this in the video and i maybe the youtuber didn't know this maybe he didn't know this but like that's crazy under different names the scene was very young and volatile back then orgs came and went and there was no structure like there is now with franchise leagues i was never denied a spot or removed from a team because they accused me of fixing matches wow. he also claims that my release from c9 was from the ibu power scandal and the chat logs being released this is an example of misrepresenting the timeline to fit the narrative you want the chat Oof. logs released the day after the ibu power match happened i was released from cloud nine nine months after that match purely that's crazy spinning the narrative to win is insane really off performance and team fit alone the video then gives examples of teams like misfits and complexity saying i was the first to get replaced as soon as the team would start to play poorly shazam would be one of the first players to be dropped nobody exactly wanted him on their team so at the first time to do so they would always drop him that's just outright not true and <laughs> it can be as easy as just looking up the roster history of these teams to see that wow it's clear from the rearranging of the timeline of events that Timmy made this video in bad faith. He demonstrates an ignorant mishandling of the facts to push a narrative that he made up. It amazes me. He speaks on such authority of my career while knowing so little about the scene. Regarding what he said about my Ooh. character and likability in the video, he showed clips from one person I called out for being weird to women in Valorant. Shazam will literally Shazam is like the biggest, the guy stirrer of all time. And another person that started beefing with me over my longtime teammate and friend's mental health crisis. Well, also so I have to say this. If you want to be a pro in any game, sometimes you have to have that I'm the best. I'm the best mentally. You need to tell yourself that you're the best. You need to say that you're the best. And you need to basically say, hey, like, I'm here to stay. And that's my mentality. And a lot of people might think that as douchiness, they might, you might, be saying oh he's a terrible person because he puts himself first he's a terrible person because he has an ego he's a terrible person and all this and maybe that's kind of part of the situation shazam wanted to be the best pro player he wanted to be in the pro scene maybe they, they just misread his i'm this is just a theory this is not this is not like facts you see what i'm saying maybe they just misread him you see what i'm saying maybe they just misread his intentions and he said that he worked really hard to get here also he was a web designer he's multi-talented very talented person but like the other youtuber like i don't know like i feel i feel bad you see what i'm saying i feel bad like and maybe and i'm going to defend the other youtuber a little bit maybe he had the wrong information maybe he didn't do enough research maybe he was misguided but uh, but i also have to feel bad for shazam because he's been getting a lot of hate off this video and it's not good um, but I'm glad that he's bringing everything to light and he's putting a full summary of all the situation. He's telling us the truth. I'm glad you see what I'm saying. I don't know. And Shazam, I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I gotta apologize a little bit because I thought it was this narrative, but I didn't know the full truth. I was only going off the information that I was given. So I do apologize for that. Also quoting the things I said in an Indian accent. You can't tell anyone, please. I trust you. Finally, I wanted to address Timmy's claim that I react poorly to criticism. I can acknowledge at times I have overreacted to comments and critique, which has contributed to an unfortunate portrayal of myself mm. in the community. I also acknowledge that DMCA striking content 
no matter how it's portrayed, is not a productive way to go about addressing the criticism. There are many things that- See, that statement right there, that statement right there, I give Shazam a clap because why strike someone? Just address it personally. Just make a video about it. Tell the truth, tell your side, and don't copyright strike them. Don't DMCA them, bro. Like, like if someone's reacting to your content, let them react to your content. Let them make their story, but actually address it. And I like how Shazam's doing it. I, I'm going to give him a clap, bro, because he understands. I feel like Shazam understands from the creator's point of view that DMCA is someone taking, getting a strike. You're getting your, your algorithm goes down. Your, your channel has a strike on it. Now you got to fight that. Maybe they have to go to court. And I'm proud of Shazam actually addressing it personally and not using the court or the strike as a definitive to basically how to explain this um not using the court to basically like kick them out you see what i'm saying i don't know and and like i don't know i just think that it's just it's just good you see what i'm saying and i i really do appreciate it so shout out to sam for doing that uh in retrospect i wish i had not reacted to or entertained at all that being said while there is valid criticism it feels like a lot of the negative feedback is hate mask that's criticism. But that's a topic I wanna to talk about in a later video. I wanna focus on the accusations at hand. To conclude, I'm here to set the record straight. If you continue to dislike me after this video, that's fine. All I ask is that you honestly engage with the facts and form an opinion of your own. Don't let bad faith actors like Timmy or Retake tell mm. you how to think and feel. Thanks guys. Yo, shout out to Suzanne, bro. Shout out to Suzanne. I still have to give them, if you guys have not subscribed to his damn subscribe and like and turn on your notifications come on give the guy a notification we support everyone we react to um and i feel like the i'm gonna i'm gonna go a little off i feel like the other guys like they didn't get the full information right they didn't have all the information correctly um and i don't think and i and i like how like shajam just addresses the video shout to zam for doing that but at the same time i'm gonna defend the youtubers they're just making a video and to get clicks and the 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 one thing I could say, the one thing that Shazam needs to realize is the thumbnail is to intrigue viewers into watching their videos, even if it's in malintent. Every YouTuber does this. It's just marketing 101, Shazam. Um, but everything else you said, you you clear you clarified, you didn't strike him, you told the truth, you were transparent with Valve, you re everything that they said, you supported your thing. And I, I appreciate you, Zam. Shazam. Like that that means the world to me. But like I the one thing I cannot, in my opinion, is the thumbnail. Come on, the, every creator does it. Every creator clickbaits. It's just part of it. But yo, if you guys have not liked and subscribed to Shazam, please do that. I'm gonna say that for the last time. And thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. And it's gonna be the end of the video. It's a long way. This story came back. This is crazy. Okay, guys. Peace. Bye guys.